Thanks for watching Here to Stay TV. We're at the Global Business Travel Association meeting once again, and I am here with uh, Marcus Keller. He's the SVP, the Global Sales Organization. I like that you put in organization to make it sound really uh, official. Thanks for speaking with me today. <laughs> it's a real pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. So I'm very curious to learn about some of the business travel trends that you're seeing out there right now, and um, you know, how's that global market doing? Yeah, look, I think there's um, there's several business travel trends in particular which we're focused on. The first is, um, you know, making the whole business travel process easier is is, is a topic that we're seeing reoccurring. Um, the the RFP process, which is very heavy for everyone who's involved, we're seeing more and more multi-year contracts. We're seeing more and more requests to integrate the meetings and events aspect of the contracts into the programs. We're also seeing more and more requests for uh, non-traditional accommodation. So as you know, we are also in the private rental uh, space through a brand called One Fine. So how do we integrate that into the, into the buying process? The second trend, which I think is quite big, is, is that there has been for a number of years now a, um, a desire by the end users to try and get back to an experience which is a little bit more authentic. Um, and, and as a result of that, you have the proliferation of lifestyle brands, which has come up. And we've obviously uh, taken an interest and launched a, a couple of different lifestyle brands, including Mama Shelter, of which there's one here in, in Los Angeles. And then the third thing is that um, there is there is an ongoing concern about safety and security, you know, and that that topic uh, remains relevant. Um, that topic remains important uh, both for the uh, corporate traveler and also for the end user. Uh, and and obviously that's front of mind for us as right. well. So let's go back to the, uh, the the first part, the whole um, RFP process changing. It seems like there's a lot of unnecessary layers that technology is able to remove from it. So what are some of the things specifically you're doing to make sure that travel managers have an easier experience and are going to want to stay with the core hotels? Yeah, so trying to make that process as smooth as possible is obviously a key focus, you know, and part of it is through technology, so through uh, partners like Concur, for example, and easing the expense management e-billing side of the of the program. Um, but there is, you know, the challenge for us is that as a growing hotel group, uh, with growing hotels in destinations where we already have hotels, right. where, where travel managers are trying to reduce the number of partners they're working on, you know, how do we strike that balance? So, um, you know, we're growing our sales network, we're opening offices in new locations, the integration of the Fairmont Raffles and Swiss Hotel brands have brought with it a number of clients and a client base which is new to us, that opens new opportunities. Right. Um, so I think you know through different means we're able to uh, help. What, one of the things that really struck me as interesting that you said was multi-year contracts. That seems to um, take, a, take a lot of effort out of people's day-to-day -day schedule if they can just sign a deal and, and have it sit for a couple of years. How do you feel about that and how does that work for you guys if the market's going up or if the market's going down? Yeah, look, in, in principle, I'm in favor of multi-year agreements. I think that, you know, if you like a hotel one year, chances are, you know, if the hotel continues to do a good job, you're going to like the hotel the next year, your travelers are going to like it. It's in our interest to keep you happy. You might build into the agreement, obviously, some different mechanisms for the rate increases that we want, but on the other hand, there's exchange rate factors and things to be considered, but, you know, th that's more the devil in the detail. The principle is, if you like the hotel, we'll continue to do a good job for you. Let's sign a multi-year deal. Right. Yeah, great, makes a lot of sense. I want to move over now to um, the whole idea of the uh, the shared economy and what you did with uh, One Fine Stay. So how do you rationalize that? A lot of hotel companies can't seem to come to the terms with this whole disruptor and changing the way that we stay. I might be staying in a shared economy type of product here right now. So how do you focus on that side of the business without you know, betraying the love of your original business. Yeah, I think you know, the first thing is I'm not sure that it's a disruptor. You know, the sharing economy has existed since the dawn of time. Right. It got packaged uh, into a label which makes it convenient for people to understand and, and perhaps to, to wrap their head around. And it also got globalized, right? And, and that brought with it a lot of uh, benefits, including professionalization, organization, certain amount of standards and expectations. So, uh, you know, we took a stake obviously in One Fine Stay, a brand which originally only had a, uh, two or three destinations in the world. We've expanded those destinations. We've got two and a half thousand properties today. What we're trying to do is to work with our partners to work out, well, what are their requirements from a technology point of view? What are their travelers' expectations in terms of minimum services on site? Now, fortunately, we've ticked a lot of that off because unlike uh, some of the competitors in that space, we're, we're never putting the traveler directly in contact with the owner. It's always right. us handling them, right? So it's always us doing the check-in. It's us providing the on-site service. It's us providing the conciergerie services. So we're bridging what are some of the conveniences of traditional right. hotelery with the convenience of either the added space or the location or the extended stay factor, um, you know, and I think that 
you know, the reality is people are staying in that, even if um, some travel managers might not want to acknowledge that, but it is happening. And, uh, and in, in a certain generation and for a certain type of customer, there's a convenience in that. And, and, and we acknowledge that and we want to be in that business. Right, makes a lot of sense. Now, speaking of technology, everything that we've talked about today is really being enabled by technology. How do you make sure that it's not too much technology where you wind up losing those personal connections either through your global sales organization or just dealing with the customer at the property level. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, people, end, you know, people do business with people they like, you know, and that is, that is a key factor. And in fact, uh, over the past year, we've been very conscious about not uh, being too focused on the transaction a transactional element of selling it and to be very focused on the relational aspect of selling it. You know, forums like GBTA, they're perfect for that. Just reinforcing the fact that we're not necessarily here to squeeze, squeeze you for an extra room. No, we're here to just say thank you for what you've done for us. At the same time, the end traveler uh, is a key focus for us. You know, everything that we've done in terms of technology over the past 24 months has been geared toward what makes their stay better. How do we get to know them better? How can we be sure that what was the experience in one hotel is replicated somewhere else, you know? And technology does provide the backbone for that. And, and you know, investments in that are, are essential. Excellent, so uh, before we wrap up, um, so how many more brands are you going to buy or create? Is it an endless pit or is there a stopping point at, some, at somewhere? No comment on All right, excellent. So expect thousands of new brands coming from these guys any second. Just kidding, I love what you guys are doing. It's really um, fabulous stuff. You've been expanding really, I think, at a rational pace over the last number of years. Every year just moving, 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 moving. So it's fun to watch it. And it's fun to watch a, a European company give a give some guff to some of the American hotel companies too. So uh, for Marcus Keller and me, Glenn Hausman, thanks for watching Here to Stay TV.